Okay, so here's a little pantry. If I spin around, here's the bathroom. And here, it looks cool with the lights off. Oops. See, it's kind of got a cool glow behind the mirror. And then this is my roommate's room. And then you walk through here. Here's like a like a little living room, a cool little kitchen. And then here's my bedroom, a little messy as usual. And then um, guest room. Honestly, I don't even remember what I've talked about and not talked about. <laughs> um, what day is it? So yesterday, well, okay, so Saturday, I just stayed home and got stuff done and rested. I just, I'm used to pushing myself mentally and emotionally, but not physically. So I kind of like, my blisters had blisters and all of my muscles hurt. And But so yesterday, which was Sunday, I went to the studio for a couple hours, but I was feeling kind of crappy, but I did the best I could. And then I went to an open studio in um, like a different part of town that some of the other residents were doing. Um, and I mostly did it because I have an open studio in like, like 10 days, it's crazy. And I just kind of wanted to see what the expectations were um, and take any notes and stuff. Uh, and of course I wanted to support the other residents that had an open studio. And it was helpful, but it was the hottest day in humanity. Like, I don't even understand. Like my, the inside of my nose was sweating. Like I even read an article that like somebody in, in like the Brooklyn Marathon yesterday, like passed away because of the heat. Like it was just, I was like melting. I mean, I, I like to wear these and they literally like slid off my face. Like I was crying these stickers cause it was so hot. But then today, so today I'm like tank topping it. And it was like chilly. Like I had to bring a jacket. I had to go back and get a jacket. So what? Okay, but so today I had a studio meeting at like 10 and I wanted to get there early to get some stuff done. It was a really good studio meeting. I mean, all of them have been good, but the, there was just a lot of, um, I think I'm getting better at figuring out what I should talk about to get feedback that's going to help. Like, I feel like I've been like figuring out because a lot of the work I'm working on is I'm still learning how to talk about it. I know I still need to, Clint told me I need to talk about my work on these videos and I will at some point, but I'm not going to lie. It's going to be a crazy race between now and this open studio, because of course I'm like totally over ambitious and the difference between, I mean, there's a lot of differences between how I would work in Cincy and how I would work here. Like, excuse me, in Cincy, I have an army of amazing people that will show up and help me if there's like a problem in here, I don't. And um, you have to lug everything like an hour and a half. And I don't know how I feel about staying all night to like work on stuff, which is usually what I do at home. So, I have a super ambitious plan and I want to turn my studio space into an experience and I'm going to work like a dog tomorrow, today, tomorrow and Wednesday. I'm also going to like teach a class with my friend Grace to some students in France at eight o'clock in the morning. Life is weird and awesome sometimes. Um, so I have to leave at like seven in the morning tomorrow. Probably, honestly, yeah, probably seven. Maybe I should even leave at like 6.50 to get there. But so I'm gonna stay. So today I got to the studio at 8.30. I stayed until 6.30. And then I got sushi when I got home cause I was just like too tired. And I got a coffee for the morning. I got it tonight because I knew I would be too tired in the morning and I wanted to set myself something in my eye. I wanted to set myself up for success. <sighs> Whenever it's going to be a really early morning like that, I have to make it like as easy on myself as possible. So I'm going to get like all packed up tonight. I'm going to lay out my clothes tonight. I'm going to have my coffee. So yeah. And then Thursday I'm going home 
to go to an opening that my husband installed that we've been working on for a long time for the small gallery we run peak artist run gallery i'm so excited for the show i'm so excited to celebrate the artist run spaces in cincinnati i'm so proud to be a part of the show and i'm proud of clint for busting out all that amazing work yeah so and I just miss my husband and my cats. And it's our it's our dating anniversary tomorrow. No. Tomorrow. Wednesday. It's our dating anniversary Wednesday. And I get to see him Thursday. So that like times out really well that we can like see each other and celebrate. Eleven years. We're together eleven years. It's crazy. So I'm gonna work like a dog between now and Wednesday. I'm gonna fly home and I'm gonna make Clint do some work with me at home. I'm gonna fill a suitcase that I'm gonna check coming back with more stuff that I need for this open studio. Cause you know, go big or go home. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna work like a dog, go to a few meetings, set up this studio. So it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy and then probably the Monday after the open studios, I'm just gonna like sleep the whole day. But hopefully it all works out. I'll do my best and see how it goes. Oh, so I went to go get some sushi because I was starving and I found this like really cheap, amazing sushi restaurant that was right nearby. And I was just like too tired to cook. This is what happens when I start working around the clock. I stop cooking because up until this point, I've been like cooking. Um, but so I was like waiting for this sushi and this guy walks up to me and he goes, okay, tell me where the party is. And I was like, oh, this is just how I dress. And he goes, you are kidding me. And it was just really funny. Whew. I'm gonna be a little raw here. I'm a little emotional, so. Um, I was getting ready to go. So we have this open studio event next week and I've been working really hard on it and I have to work really hard when I get back to get everything done and um, I got an email from my studio today saying that somebody had made a noise complaint about my sewing machine and I just feel kind of shocked um, and we're kind of going back and forth and there's talk of me changing studios and I just feel very uh, disappointed because I try to respect other artists processes and we have to make all kinds of noise and I wear headphones when I hear I there's there was one day where somebody was like banging all day and I just put on my headphones and tried to honor their process and um, you know I drove 10 hours here in a u-haul so that I could bring my sewing machine and sew and um, I just, every second counts between now and the open studio. And I had a very ambitious project and, um, you know, now I feel paranoid and kind of shut down that like, of course I want to respect other people's space and work. But if you're gonna have a studio in a studio building, I think you just have to be aware that everybody works differently. And yeah, my, I, so I could buy a white noise machine or something, but my sewing machines, the volume doesn't turn down. And all I'm guilty of is working really damn hard. Like I've been working so hard. I've been pulling like 10, 14 hour days just in the studio and then going to all these meetings and things. And I think it's just, all these kinds of things come with ups and downs you know of course it's an incredible opportunity to be in new york and um and be meeting so many amazing people and going to amazing events and um Ugh, I can't look because I'm getting stupidly emotional. Um, you know, to have a studio here and work and have the opportunity to put my work out here, like it's so amazing. 
but it's also very challenging to change how I work to a different location. And I'm a very social worker, like all of my friends and my husband are very much a part of my process. And, you know, I really look forward to my roommate getting here this weekend, but I've been, you know, very alone in all of this and doing my best and just trying to like hold it together. And I've been like, how am I gonna pull this off, this open studio event? Cause you know, I just got here two weeks ago and it's a lot of work and I normally work with other people. And so I think it just, it adds a lot of stress. And I was just working really hard to like not miss my husband all the time. And so yeah, this just feels, um, feels very personal and it feels and so they you know, they were saying that I might have to trade studios and I definitely don't have time to do that before the open studio event. Cause I was like, I had budgeted every second. I don't have time to move, but also I had planned the event for my studio. So I don't know if I'll include this or not. I just, even if it's just for my sake, I want to document all of it, the, the highs and the lows. I mean, anything, if you get a good, if you get a new job, like it's really exciting, but you have to grieve the job you're leaving behind. Even if you hated your job, there's still things you liked about it. And there's a comfort zone. And, you know, it's been a lot of changes at once the past two weeks. And I was just starting to like find a groove. And now I feel like I've taken 10 steps back. So I think it's just a lot. Sorry about all the drama earlier. Um, here's how it all played out. I felt like I was being called to the principal's office because I was pulled into the director's office of the building and we talked about it and he was very um, open-minded and trying to be helpful, which was nice. And then um, because this person's studio is right next to mine, I heard that they got called in to the principal's office and um, I'm not sure what they talked about, but uh, I mean, this guy was basically just trying to play peacemaker and he was saying, you know, he was between a rock and a hard place where um, it is like a shared space and we have to find a way to all work together. And he was right. And um, so we were all trying to brainstorm how to make this work and where we've landed is that I will sew for an hour and then like set timers and then do other stuff for an hour so that it's not one steady stream of sound. And I do genuinely want to like be a good team player. Like I don't want somebody to have like a bad experience in their studio. I just also find it kind of unreasonable that like, of course the act of making art often comes with a lot of sounds. Um, and it just seems like, I don't know, it was odd. <laughs> um, but so then I thought it was funny because I like stopped, I set my timer, I sewed for an hour and then I like started making some paper patterns for a hat and I kind of felt like I was making more noise with my paper patterns, not intentionally, like that's just crunchy paper sounds than I was with sewing. So I don't know, hopefully this works for her. <laughs> but yeah, it, it just felt like because I've just been working so hard and I want to create like an interesting experience for the open studio event. And, you know, I just, I felt powerless because I always want to try to be respectful of other people and I want to try to um, work with them and uh, be a good team player and not assume that, you know, that I know everything or, you know, like I, these are all things that I want, but I felt so powerless because I cannot change the volume of my sewing machine and I literally like drove it up here 10 hours in a u-haul so that I could sew all summer and if I can't sew I really feel like lost and stuck like everything but I guess then I would just continue to change and adapt I don't know so yeah I just felt really shocked and I think I was a little like sleep deprived from just working a lot and so I'm trying to be more optimistic and just to come up with an altered plan where I'm going back and forth. And honestly, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's better because it's probably not healthy to like sit and sew for such a prolonged period of time. So 
maybe it's good that it'll force me to get up and walk around and do other things. So I'm just going to try to have a good toot and just keep, keep on keeping on. Um, tonight I'm going to tidy up the apartment and pack because my roommate's coming on Sunday and I won't be back till Monday because I'm going to fly home to Cincinnati and go to an opening at the Contemporary Art Center. It's a show called, uh, it's like Artist Run Spaces and it's um, co-hosted by the CAC and the Contemporary Art Center and uh, Wave Pool Gallery. And um, I'm excited. So I'm excited to just see my husband and pet my cats and see all the people in the Cincinnati art scene that, um, that I love at the CAC. I'm about to make the <clears throat> two hour public transportation trip to LaGuardia so I can go home. So for a few days, pretty pumped to see my husband and cats and family and all of it. <laughs> Test, test, test. I am back to New York. <laughs> um, it was a crazy weekend. Uh, I got some fantastic, amazing new hair. The master hair designer that I've been working with since I was 12 and who I... It's sort of turned it into this ongoing conversation, collaboration where we, uh, I never tell her anything. She sort of interprets me back to me and always does incredible things. And I just went in to get some roots. I actually didn't know she was gonna do cool color cut stuff. And I feel like pizzazz from Gem in the Holograms and it's perfect. Like I feel amazing. <laughs> it looks like you're casting a spell. <laughs> I am. <laughs> um, I think it was one of those things where, you know, I, I didn't, maybe initially it seemed like an inconvenience to have to go home like right very quickly into this residency, but I am so grateful for it because I just feel like I went home and filled my tank. You know, this experience is incredible. It's an incredible opportunity and I'm grateful for it every day, but it's also really hard. <laughs> And I had this same experience when I lived in Japan. It's like your heart is split in two um, because you're you're present with all your excitement about your work and your opportunities, but you also like love your people and your home and um, you know. So I miss my husband constantly and my cats constantly and just all my people, my family. Um, so it was so nice to. To get to spend the day with Terry, and um, it's always just so uplifting to spend the day with her. And then, um, like as soon as I got back, my husband and I went to the mall. It was our dating anniversary. We went to the mall and uh, made a bear so that I would have like something to hug. And it has a really sweet message to me. Um, and of course, it's like a rainbow bear because um, I don't have any cats or husbands to hug. So now I have them. So it was a really cute date. We went to the photo booth and because um, that's like our thing we've always done photo booths especially on our dating anniversary um and we got we ate in the food court i got vietnamese food and he got pizza of course um so it ended up being and then we went home and um i was like pretty beat that day and um you know he cooked some food for dinner i think we had shrimp or something and um we caught up on some tv shows and it was just like a really perfect day and then um, it's just so funny how malls are so like, like they feel like a time machine or something. And then, so then Friday I spent the day with Terry and we went to the opening at the CAC, the artist run, artist run spaces exhibition, which features, oh, I have the, I did have a little book. Whoa. Oops. I have this little book of it all of our names and then peak has a cool little poem that we wrote with our picture um that was so fun it was so fun to a just see so many again like filling my tank with like the cincinnati art scene is just like so supportive and everybody's rooting each other on and yeah i just felt really excited and 
I was excited about that show. I was excited about celebrating all the other art spaces. It was at the CAC, but it was co-curated by Wave Pool Gallery in Cincinnati. And so yeah, I was excited to celebrate all the artists. I was excited to celebrate um, all the art spaces. I was excited to see so many people in the art scene that I just genuinely um, am grateful for. Uh, we got to meet our friend's baby, and then my friend, his art name is Vesper, and we went to grad school together, and uh, I haven't seen him in forever, that was a treat, and he did a performance that was like, again, everything that I needed, it just was very um, inspirational and filling, um, and Clint's clubhouse looked so good, all the, the whole installation, he did such a good job with the whole installation, but the clubhouse, um, it was just nice. He'd been talking about it and ideating on it for a long time, and it was nice to see it in real life. And there's just so many little details. I can't wait to come back in August and spend a lot of time really exploring the details. I feel like by the end of the night, by the time we like were able to look at it, I was just like really tired. Um, and of course, Future Plant made an appearance. And then um, Saturday, we just like stayed in and got stuff done because I have this open studio this coming Friday so I've come back to hit the ground running but my husband and I were cutting out shapes out of wallpaper and we binged Stranger Things and Obi-Wan and then Sunday we went to church with my family and we got some little rosas if you're not from Cincinnati you won't know what that means and then right after that we got graders so we had like a very Cincinnati lunch with my grandma and then Clint and I went back to the sweatshop and cut more wallpaper shapes, binged more Stranger Things. Of course, I hugged my cats a lot. So yeah, it was it was it was emotional to to say goodbye. But um, I got my cool bear now, and uh, <laughs> um, and I feel yeah, I feel like a renewed sense of energy. So I think it it was a good thing. And hopefully Clint gets to visit in June. And that would be so amazing to share part of this with him. So yeah, I'm about to look at what they've put on my schedule for me for the week and try to figure out how I can wiggle out as much studio time as possible. One of my students might come to the open studio, which I'm really looking forward to. So I, um, it's two hours from LaGuardia. I got in at like 8 a.m. So I left Cincinnati at like 5 a.m. I slept on the plane. Um, I took a bus to like an area where my train stops and then I got some breakfast and some coffee and then I took an hour train and I have this like, I had this like giant suitcase because I brought up, I brought all this wallpaper. I brought all this weird stuff with me and I'm like lugging it up all these stairs and on the train and it was, it was hilarious. So I think, pretty sure this is week four. I mean, I'm honestly so out of it, I don't even know. I think this is like the beginning of week four of 12 weeks for my residency, so. Oh, and my roommate's here. Um, they got in yesterday, so I'm really excited. I'm hoping that I maybe won't feel as isolated because I'll have a buddy now, so. Um, I just had to record a video really fast because literally my roommate and I just got caught in the craziest rain. I mean, everything is wet. My shoes are full of water. It was crazy. And I was like on the fence if I should wash my hair tonight, and I guess I will. Um, worked like a crazy person today. It's looking closer, but still a lot of work to do. Um, and then I went to an artist talk and exit pop-up exhibition at RU with my roommate and also my friend Chanhe, who lives in Seattle, um, like just called me and said that she was at JFK for a couple hours and asked if <clears throat> um, if she could if she wanted 
to visit for a second. I was like, heck yeah, because it's so much fun to, you know, I hadn't seen her in a really long time in person. So, um, so that was a real treat. We only got to catch up for like a couple minutes, but it was still awesome. She's on her way to Spain for like this amazing art symposium because she's a superstar. Um, it's all feeling like a blur. I'm going to like basically take a nap and then get up really early, like five or six and head to the studio. I've got a meeting tomorrow and then I think I'm just going to work like the rest of the day. There's something on the RU schedule, but I think I just need to get all my stuff together because I am one of those people that like nobody's holding me accountable but me but when I get like a vision in my head I have to see it through or it makes me crazy and so I just I know I'm being ridiculous but I gotta see it through so <clears throat> um I also wanted to say been burning through some audiobooks which is fun um yeah <laughs> Okay, so this week has been a crazy studio week and I have an open studio event tonight and tomorrow. I'm getting ready to get dressed. I've been making a ton of jewelry and stuff because anytime I get my workout, um, you know, that's how artists make money is all that kind of stuff that they have for sale in their studio. So if you want to support artists, buy their stuff. Um, I don't really sell my work because my a lot of my archive is always alive and so I mean if somebody offered me the right price tag like if somebody said hey I'll give you 20 grand for this sculpture you've been working on for 10 years I'd be like okay um, but yeah so it would have to be quite an enticing price because of my work I like I make a little bit of work and then I build off of it and then I build off of it and so I'm like constantly investing in like every time I get an opportunity I invest a little bit more make a little bit more so that you know I play a long game so like over like a decade I build out like a really big thing um, so it, it really takes a long time and so and I'm, I'm constantly like getting it out in different ways and performing with it so I don't often like sell my work my pieces but I sell like clothing that has the same prints on it and I sell um, jewelry that interlocks just like my sculptures and just little stuff like that um, because anything helps anything that people buy goes back into the work to make more cool stuff happen <laughs> so yeah so I've been there a lot lately and um, taking a lot of lifts ordering a lot of takeout my roommate was really awesome this week. They ordered groceries and they let me tag onto their grocery order because I didn't even have time to like place the order and pick it up, you know? So they're just really cool. I'm really glad they're here because it was hard to just be alone. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's nice to see a face from home and you know, of course they're, I really like them as a person and they're really inspiring and so, um, yeah, so they were really cool so that they're, I, otherwise like I just would have, it would have been takeout for every meal because I was in that like every second counts mode. Yesterday I like went to the studio at the crack of dawn, probably like seven or eight, had a meeting at like 11 or 12 and then I ate lunch that I had packed because of the groceries and then, um, and then I went to Blick and I, cause I realized this thing that I wanted to happen wasn't quite working and I needed like some plastic and I, it's the biggest Blick I've ever been to. And then I went from Blick to the apartment, which is like another 45 minutes because <clears throat> I had ordered stuff off Amazon that I needed to finish what I was doing and they had just come. But then I went back to the studio until like 12.30 or one, I'm honestly not sure. I took a lift home cause my mom gets like so stressed I mean, it's so sweet that she cares and pays attention to my safety, but you know, it sometimes feels like unnecessary spent money, but whatever. It's better to be loved, I suppose. <laughs> um, so yeah, so my plans are to do the open studio today and tomorrow. And honestly, Sunday, I may just like stay in bed the whole day and get like some computer stuff done or something. It's just been a lot. <laughs> That's always, and I'm in that phase and I'm sure all artists go through this. So you're in this, it's like a cycle. So first bit of the cycle is, oh, I have this idea and I'm really excited about it and I can't wait. And then the second phase is like, 
why was I so ambitious? How am I gonna get all this done? I'm going crazy, ah. And it's just like work, work, work. And then it gets done and you're just like, I'm a fraud. I have so much self doubt. I have no idea what I'm doing. Why did I even do this? You know, and that's sort of like the phase that I'm in, but I've, I've been around this rodeo enough to know that that's like a, it's just like part of my human brain. And I just have to let the cycle go through that that self doubt will always kind of creep in. And at the end of the day, um, I'm just exploring ideas and experimenting on things that matter. And so there really isn't a wrong way to do it. Um, I think, I think I put a lot of pressure on myself in this residency, you know, like I need to make a ton of stuff. I need to do a ton of stuff. I need to like maximize this experience. And so I think that pressure might be, might be part of it. Okay, I'm like sitting in my bed. <laughs> this has been such a crazy day. I like don't even know where to start, but in like, it's been like a great day. Um, so today was day two of the open studios. And so there was one last night and there was one today. And I think I just, I don't know, like the pressure of everything, of all this residency and just being away from my, from what I'm used to and my support system. And it's just been a lot. <laughs> and I've been working really hard. Like I had this vision for what I wanted my studio to look like for a while, but of course it was like in true Lindsay form, it was like pretty over ambitious. And, um, so I've just been working really hard, probably not sleeping as much as I should, um, putting all this pressure on myself like every other artist. Right. So, I feel like I was a little nervous going into the event last night and of course it went great and you know all the other artists in my building are like so amazing and it was so nice to meet them and hear about their work and then like you know really cool people came through um so I was less nervous today because last night was really fun um and then but today it was a little bit longer. I think it was like an hour longer. So I was, and I, cause I've just been like kind of tired lately. So I was like, man, I hope I can sustain like four hours of, you know, it's just like a lot of talking. And I feel like when you talk to people that are new, maybe it takes a little bit more energy. Like when you talk to friends you've known your whole life, you're like, let, I don't want to say let your guard down, but I don't know. It just, it feels more soothing, I guess. Whereas maybe when you're meeting someone new, you're like, okay, like I want to like ask some good questions or, um, I don't know, like maybe you're like, for some reason for me, I don't know if this is true for everybody else, but for me, like meeting new people just takes like a little bit more energy. And so I was, cause I always want to like meet people authentically and, and try to like hear what they're saying and, and be engaged. And so I was just nervous about if I could like sustain the energy of the whole day. Um, and the short answer is it was an amazing day. Um, and it's just like, it had been such a challenging few weeks and it just, it felt like this, this was maybe the best day I've had of the resident residency so far. Like it like made it all worth it for me because, um, so one thing was I was looking, I was really looking forward to one of my students just happened to like be in New York city at the same time that I was here. Um, so she came in, she has like a job here and she, um, she, she only lives four hours away and she came in and I was really looking forward to that for a few reasons. One, it's just like nice seeing people from home um, when you're just, you know, in a new place, being around all different kinds of people. Um, and two, um, <clears throat> you know, I'd had her in a, multiple classes this year and I, I know a lot about her work and I feel like she's very familiar with some of how I think and process things. And um, so my work that I made for this open studio was very new and I'm still getting to know what those things want to be. And I was excited because she's also, she also thinks in a time-based way like I do. And I was excited to just sketch some things with her. Um, and with somebody that I'm already familiar with, sometimes it's hard to like bring someone in cold to someone who's not familiar with your work. But I feel like the student was already really familiar with some of the way I, I think and process things. So she was able to really quickly like jump into these ideas. And I was like, you know, I wanted to give her a heads up that I was hoping she might want to like 
perform with me, but I, but I didn't want to like, of course, if she didn't want to do it, I wasn't going to pressure her. But so I messaged her ahead of time and I was like, just so you know, I would love to do this. And she was like super enthusiastic. And it was just really a treat to like see someone from home and do some fun performing with them. And she like jumped right in and made like brilliant choices and it like gave me so much to think about. And so that was amazing to just, yeah. And she brought a really nice friend who like documented all of it expertly, even though it was like her first time using a DSLR. So, so that was super cool. And then like in the middle of that, um, the director of my residency came in and got to see some of the performance. So it was nice to share that with her. And of course she's so nice and supportive and enthusiastic. So that was really amazing that she came. And then later, um, one of the residents who, um, it's weird. It turns out that we lived in Japan. He's Japanese and we lived in Japan in the same city at the same time. Like it's weird how New York can feel so big and so small at the same time. Um, but what's really cool is that we have a lot of similar interests in terms of like research and the things that we make. And, um, like we both work in shapes and like, he's really interested in Black Mountain College. I'm really interested in John Cage who taught at Black Mountain College. Um, we both try to think in dimensional ways. And, um, so, so there was just like a lot to talk about. And he was like really like digging into a lot of the ideas and asking me good questions. And then this other person from the residency who works there came in and she was adding even more like amazing questions and actually kind of like, like she was kind of challenging me in like the best way. Cause remember this is new work. And so she was really asking like, like some hard questions that I had to really think about, but I felt like it was really important. Like it really pushed my thinking about some of these things. And they, they probably hung out for a while, like maybe 30 or 40 minutes Um, just investing like thoughtful questions and thoughtful responses to my work. And I'm just, yeah, I'm just really grateful because once you're out, once you're not a student, once you're outside of academia, I mean, I'm in academia, but I'm the one asking the questions. Like I'm the one trying to help students dig and I'm not used to people digging in for me and with me. And, um, it was just a real treat and, I felt like I really made some thoughtful breakthroughs. And then out of nowhere, the director of the studio building invited us, all the artists, because it was like a really successful two days, and he invited us all up onto the roof to have a barbecue. And what I wasn't expecting is when I um, got up onto the roof, legit, there was the Statue of Liberty at sunset. And we were like eating burgers and sipping wine and like meeting all these amazing artists and like, this friend of ours that we showed at peak and we met through my friend Lorraine, um, has a studio on the fourth floor. And so I got to hang out with her and, um, here's a fun twist. This is a follow up to the previous video where I recorded, where I was like ridiculously over emotional about, um, a noise complaint on my sewing machine. Well, the person that made that complaint, um, like we ended up really connecting later and, um, and talked it through. And it turns out that this person is so amazing and so insightful and, um, gave me great advice about the city. And I really like her work. And, um, it just felt like a really positive shift from, like, I think we were both just like stressed and working hard and it was just one of those weird misunderstandings. And, um, yeah, I'm just so grateful that I got to see this other side of her that's really amazing. And um, so, yeah, I hung out with her most of the night and a few other really amazing people. And while we were, like, watching this sunset, <laughs> and um, she gave me, this this friend gave me a lot of amazing um, things that I can do in New York City and go see and go do. And then um, I came home and I caught up with one of my childhood friends Uh, not childhood. I guess it's childhood. We met in high school and, um, we talked on the phone for literally hours, just like catching up and listening to each other. And, um, so yeah, it's just like randomly been not random, but just, you know, how some days fill you up (laughs) some days, sometimes life is hard and some days just make you feel really alive and empowered. And, um, so I'm glad, I'm glad that I pushed myself really hard because I got so much good feedback about my work and 
uh, my, some of my favorite reactions were sometimes when I got real tired, I would sit in this chair and sometimes people would come in and not even see me because I like blended into my environment because I like look like my pieces. And so people would be like, oh, I didn't see you there. So I thought that was pretty funny. And then also a lot of people would just walk in and go, wow. And to me, that was like an exciting reaction that that was like their first like gut thing. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like all that hard work really paid off the last two days. And I feel just really inspired by all the other artists in my building and um, by the feedback that I got and I'm excited to rest tomorrow. I'm just going to like rest like crazy, maybe do some laundry <laughs> much needed when you're sweating a lot, then you need to do laundry. And then I'm hoping this week to maybe just like pull back a little bit and just, I, I feel like it's been really interesting to try to figure out this balance between making a lot of art and seeing art and having experiences. And I think it really does. I think it's trial and error. Obviously I, last week I just was in the studio like 24 seven and that's probably not the most healthy thing to do. But I, again, I had this like ambitious goal and I saw it through and I'm glad. And now I'm going to try to maybe go see the city a little bit, explore a little bit, have some experiences, catch up on <laughs> some emails and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that like tonight I just had, or today I just had like a really great day and I still have seven weeks left <laughs> of this residency. So it felt powerful. <laughs>